Thanks for joining us for Up to Speed Live on this Thursday, September 15th. Uh, joining us today uh, is none other, none other than Verizon's chairman and CEO, Mr. Hans Vestberg. He is joining us today for a great conversation. It's good to be with you again, Hans. Um, great to be here, Andy. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. We're going to talk, of course, about business updates, but really what we're going to dive deep into are the conversations that you're having uh, with the analyst community, our investors, a very important part of our, our company. And certainly these conversations can be tough at times, but certainly enlightening as well. So Hans, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you just got back from a conference uh, out west yeah. uh, with the folks over at Goldman Sachs. And um, you know, we got to listen in on the call. We'll certainly link to that conversation uh, in the web story today. Uh, but just talk to us about why it's important for you to get out there, to get in front of um, the analyst community and make sure that we continue to share the story of Verizon. That's a really good question. But if, if you remind, remember your, our our strategy, the Verizon 2.0 strategy. We had four key stakeholders in the execute on the strategy. We, of course, had employees. The V-teamers was extremely important. We had, of course, uh, our customers and society. And finally, uh, for many good reasons, shareholders. And the way to communicate with that stakeholder is actually talk to the investor community, because the investor community, they interpret what we're doing. They're reporting back to the shareholders and to the ones that want to invest or divest in our shares how we're doing. So that's why it's important to speak to them. And, and uh, yesterday I spoke at the, I would say the law, one of the absolutely largest uh, communication conferences with thousands of thousands of people being in, uh, in, in, in California. Uh, but also Manon spoke last week at Bank of America's yes. big event. So it's not only me speaking to that stakeholder, which are our shareholders. And, and usually it's a very big stage moment where you got interviewed by somebody from Goldman Sachs, in my case, Manon by Bank of America. And then you have one, uh, you have smaller uh, investor meetings with the ones that owns our shares, because usually when you talk to Goldman Sachs, that's to spread the word what we're doing and update you on the strategy. So that, that's why it's important to be in these events. And of course, you update on the latest on the business and you reaffirm our strategy, why we're doing it and how we're seeing it. So that, that, that's an important piece of, of my work to meet investors, shareholders, uh, and talk to the stakeholders. Yeah, and I think it's important for all of us as employees to remember that those conversations are a lot closer closer to us than you think. And, oh, and, I, yeah. and I'll say this, you oh, know, yeah. it, it can be you know, confusing at times, a very fast pace. And that's why during the call, I did, I did take copious notes during this call. Because and, I was speaking fast or? Well, no, I just, you know, just making sure that I understand, okay, okay we've got, you know, I mean, I was starting to write things out, EBITDA there, you know, yeah. value enhancement, cash generation. I, I invite our V team to continue to listen to these yeah. calls and think very critically about this. Yeah. And, you know, I know you got a lot of tough questions from the analysts, but hey, I'm, I'm no slouch either here on Up to Speed, so we're going we're gonna to really dive deep here. Yeah, absolutely, we should. Now, before we do, um, talk to us about some of the business updates that you are thinking about right now. No, I think there uh, uh, been a lot of new things happening in the last couple of months. I mean, I don't know, we, we can, it, there's no uh, order of magnitude, but of course, uh, the iPhone 14 came yes. out. Uh, we had uh, our continue our exclusive relationship with Apple, with the Apple One or the Unlimited One, uh, where we basically have all the Apple services, uh, uh, meaning the streaming service, the gaming service, the cloud service, etc., bundled with the phone. And that's exclusive to us. And that also shows you how we have been working with Apple all the time. That's one really important. That's how we retain and acquire uh, customers in the consumer segment. Very important. Uh, and uh, addressing a little bit the high end of our premium, the uh, unlimited premium. Uh, another update is, of course, on the network. We just came out and talked about we have now passed 150 million pops on our C-band. I mean, thanks yes. to the network team. They are just rolling out so fast. It's just amazing. And sometimes we forget we actually launched the network when? Was it January? No, was it first quarter? First, in, yeah, first in the quarter, middle yeah. of the first quarter, and already now 150. And Kyle and his team has promised to have more than 175 million of the U.S. population covered by year, and more than I remember. I accentuate more than. So let's see how much more it's going to be. Uh, that's some of them, but you also where there was a. Q3 
kickoff of a big league this week. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. yes, football's back. Football's back, and you know how we are uh, covering all the stadiums, doing new innovating things, so very exciting to see the NFL season coming up right now and the collaboration with all the teams we have and, and the league. So that's just a couple of things, but uh, we have done a lot of other stuff as well, but that's what comes to my mind. And here's the thing, I mean, this is, of course, you know, our employee channel, and we get, get to talk about this, celebrate this, but these were things that were talked about during these yeah, analyst calls absolutely. as well. Absolutely. It's totally connected to our strategy, everything we talk to this, uh, to this analyst and to this shareholders. Yeah, so, you know, hopefully during this conversation, you're taking notes, you're really, you know, diving in deep and making sure that when you tell the story of Verizon, yeah. you're doing exactly what Hans was doing, you know, all week here. So let's dive in. I want to start with the network here. Mm -hmm. Lots of questions about the network, and yep. you talked about this. 175 million plus pops coming up at the end of the year, and, and you were talking about how, uh, you know, our network continues to grow, and our customers are getting on 5G even faster yeah. than 4G. Talk to us about some of the questions you were getting from the analysts and how you responded about the network. So the questions uh, a lot around the network was, first of all, fixed wireless access, because uh, we have had great success with fixed wireless access, growing both in our VBG business and VCG, VCG business, and I updated that we, we saw a continued good momentum in the two first months of this quarter. So some of the questions come, will the network support all these fixed wireless access customers? And the answer is that we modeled this out when we both bought the C-band, but also with the millimeter wave and the LTE. So all the plans that we have in order to reach a certain magnitude of subscribers on fixed wireless access, that's really in our, in our wheelhouse. And then we have so much more spectrum and capacity in the network over time. Another question that the asked a lot about is where are these customers coming from? I mean, are you did they already have internet? And uh, remember now, we are building uh, our C-band right now in urban and suburban areas first, because we want to cover as many po uh, US citizens as possible in the beginning. So that's where we're taking the customers. They're coming a lot from the cable companies. They're, they are being cable subscribers. And I would say on the consumer side, Everyone that takes fixed wireless access takes it because it's the primary broadband. It's not like a backup or something. On the business side, it's a vast majority. I mean, all, up to 80% of everyone taking fixed wireless access uh, as a solution for the small and medium mm -hmm. company, or whatever, they are taking that as a primary broadband. Some are taking for backup. So we have great success, and it's a primary use of broadband. A lot of questions around that because the analysts and the, share and, the, uh, and the investors want to understand how successful this can be, and they're pushing me how many millions we can have in the future. And of course, we, we have given some indication early in the year, and we're not changing that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's good to be impatient, but certainly with the analysts, sometimes they want to know they right now what is going on. They want to get out more information yeah. that they can draw conclusion of. We are, of course, very very organized, structured on what we say and what we update on, so we're not saying something that, uh, that we're not supposed to yeah. say. You mentioned enterprise, and I wanted to touch on some of the VBG highlights here, yeah. and you were very proud, uh, rightly so, to mention, and I wrote this down here, business mobility, uh, 175 million, the, the, the gross net, net ads, talk to us about why that was a big point for you to talk about when it comes to Since VBG. Since VBG came together, we have never been as successful on mobility. We have four consecutive quarters of more than 150,000 new phone net additions. And that's an important measurement for the market because they want to see that we're gaining. Uh, and Sampa usually talks about that we have 45% market share in the business segment on wireless, which is a great market, market share. Share, and many ask, so why are you thinking that you have that? And we think, or well not only think, we believe that that's because the reliability and the high quality and the performance on our network. That's what a small and medium business need to have. That's what an enterprise needs to have. So a lot of question around that. And then, of course, also the success of fixed wireless access uh, for the enterprise side. Then on the on the flip side, got a lot of question, of course, on the Y line side of enterprise. Yes. That that is has had, uh, I would say, for quite a while, a, a decline constantly. And uh, the wireline business is in a, in a product transition, going from sort of the legacy networks, uh, copper, MPLS, the old type of networks, and going over to cloud-enabled solutions like SD-WAN, et cetera. That means that we have a decline in revenue, uh, and, the, and the new products are much more 
cost efficient for our customer, so the decline will continue. And a lot of questions, how long will that decline continue? What are you doing about it? And of course, Sampa and the team are working with efficiency all the time mm -hmm. to see that we're efficiently taking out costs at the same time as going down, and then, of course, offsetting that with great new products like mobility, 5G mobility, uh, with, of course, uh, new solutions like SD-WAN, uh, fiber products, etc. That's how they offset that, and that's what we really want to see. Yeah, lots of dynamic things going on on the yep. VBG side. Yep. Uh, we talked a lot, of course, about consumers and the analysts. And really don't had... forget Mobile Edge Computer. Oh, yes. I was here, you're yes. struggling here, but of course yes. Mobile Edge Compute is another area where they can offset the decline in wireline. Yeah, and that's another thing, the promise of 5G. That's yep. a question that came up yep. a lot, and of course Mobile Edge Compute really uh, you know, kind of fits that answer yeah. there. Um, on the consumer side, you talked about how 4Q is really framing up for when we really kind of start you know, hitting the gas here and getting back to business as usual. Talk to us about your thoughts on 4Q on the consumer side and what the analysts were asking and what, how you interpreted those questions. So uh, just going back a little bit to after the first quarter we came out and saw, said that in the consumer group we had a little bit softer, uh, that's the word we use, softer sort of uh, business in, on the consumer side and, well, uh, and uh, that was basically at the end of March, April and May. And uh, that's when we sat down and started thinking, where, what do we need to address in the, uh, in the consumer portfolio? And uh, we decided then for the welcome plan. Uh, Manon and the team came out with a welcome plan. The welcome plan is sort of in the low end of the premium. You bring your own device. It's addressing a, a segment where we actually was losing subscribers. Uh, and, we uh, and we wanted to address that. So that was a very important decision. And we came out from the second quarter. We had negative phone net ads in the second quarter in the consumer group. And of course, that was one of the reasons that we had a negative reaction uh, to, the, uh, to our results. Uh, even though we produce a lot of cash flow, etc., they want to see us growing. We are balancing about, uh, Omanon and the team are balancing, of course, how much promotions they're doing on handset, etc., at the same time. And we are so large right now, so we need to be more surgical. Uh, when it comes to our segmentation and doing offerings that is really responding to our consumer demands. Because we have more than, in total, over 140 million wireless lines in the company right now, including what we have in track phone and all of that. So Manon and the team on the consumer side, they need to think about the different needs in different segments of our consumer portfolio. And one need was a welcome plan. And I updated all the investors that the welcome plan is working well for us. Yes. Uh, we both got more traffic. We, we get more gross ads, ads as it's called, uh, new, new customers. So that is working so far in this quarter, the first two months. So that was an update we made. And I think that the market and the investors thought that it was a really good update. Yeah, definitely wrote uh, surgical uh, in my notes quite a few times here. I used uh, to work surgical because sometimes it's very easy to make broad brushes how you communicate to consumer segment. But you know, there are different needs for different consumers. They are all individuals. I mean, that's why why we, we, we need to be much more surgical in our segmentation yeah. models. And, and you mentioned we have the tools now to really compete in any market. Yeah. You know, we're meeting consumers where they are, uh, and you talked a lot about step-ups, you know? Yeah. Welcome gets folks into the door, but certainly there's, there are uh, customers who understand that the more I invest in Verizon, the happier myself and families will be. It's, yeah, it's and, a and, and the main switch. strategy, I mean, where we have in the next five years, the largest sort of absolute growth in market Money is actually step ups because we're in, in, in a saturated market. You can say that in the, in the wireless, that everyone has a phone in this market. So, what is important, there is always people moving around, but what is important is, of course, they see that you meet the needs of your, of your customers. And step ups is an important one. You go from a metered plan, you might, might go from a value or a prepaid plan to a metered plan to an unlimited plan to an unlimited premium plan. That journey is the most important journey when you have a subscription service that we have. We have a digital subscription service that is a mobile phone. So that uh, and the, the, the market, they are following very closely how that step up is going. That's how we work and that's how Manon and Frank and the whole team are working to move up. Then you need to go from there. Then we have the value segment with track phone and everything we're doing there as well because it's a, it's a need in the market to have different plans that is meeting other needs and they will work in the same way. Yeah, and I know that we've been moving 
moving pretty quickly uh, as yeah. far as, you know, summarizing what these conversations have been like. So certainly, if you're having trouble, certainly, you know, watch the replay, take notes. You know, this is one of those conversations you really got to kind of sink your teeth into. So, you know, we invite you to continue doing that. Um, and Hans, as we think about really the overarching message uh, to the analysts, they're certainly, they're thinking about our financial discipline. So within yeah. the, the world of finance and their ideas about our financial discipline, what was the big message to them? I think the big message is that we're confident in the strategy we're building. The network of service, the five vectors of growth, that can lead us to continued growth and continued uh, uh, both on top line and bottom line. That, uh, and then you need to constantly adapt in that model. And that's what we talked about. We're adapting with, new with a new welcome plan. We adapt with, by uh, being even more surgical in the segmentation. We're, we continue to deploy our fixed wireless access uh, network so we get even more customers on it. Uh, so that's uh, how it hangs together. Together. We're confident in our strategy. Now we update what we're doing to uh, adapt and following the market trends in the consumer and the business side. I think that 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 was the main message uh, that I updated all the investors and all the analysts that was listening to us. Yeah, I wanted to end and start summarizing. Uh, you know, you mentioned you know it's a tough crowd. Analysts are a tough crowd, and right afterwards, you know, you were on CNBC and uh, you know aired this morning. You know, talk to us about that conversation. I mean, there are different audiences, but certainly whoever you're speaking to, and you talk about this all the time, the dinner table can be full of either family, uh, friends, yeah, or... Yeah, the dinner table is full of all stakeholders. Yeah. Customers, employees, shareholders, and society in general. Yeah. So you need to think that. But the story hangs together. The difference is that you need to talk a little bit more detailed to different groups, mm -hmm. but it's the same strategy, the same values, the same stakeholders in any strategy we have. Then, when it comes to talking to the shareholders, yeah. it becomes more financials, interpret the strategy to finance, interpret all the things we're doing to how much revenue is going to be, how much profit is going to be, how our balance sheet is going to change depending on decisions. So you interpret it for that and have the conversation like that. Yeah. At the risk of a controversial question here, uh -huh. there, there was a question on the Goldman call here. What does Verizon have to get right for growth, which I didn't think was the fairest of questions. Now, but it did make me think about we've got an opportunity here to finish so strong in the fourth quarter. And I think about all the things that you talked about, it's a reflection of all the things that RVT yeah. is doing right. Yeah. Talk to us about what you're most proud of. And if we can take borrow from that question, what are things that we need to all think about in order to get the fourth quarter just picture perfect here? I, I, uh, the whole uh, notion of the strategy that we have I and mean, continue to execute on that is the most important we have. We need to be co con very successful in our, our mobility in the 5G era to get the customers in there, both on VBG and, and VCG. That, that's very important. Work every day to see that we're bringing the right things to our customers. And we have high ambitions coming into the fourth quarter. And we haven't finished the third quarter yet, so remember that. Then on, on the nation, nationwide broadband, I have to say, I mean, fixed wise broadband is so important for our customer. We can capture a market when nobody else can do it because we're so quick out with broadband as well as supported by the strongest fiber uh, network uh, in the United States, Fios. That combination, we just need to push in. And then we can do the combination to our customers where they can both have our mobility service and our broadband service. That's what we call the mobile home uh, sort of solution, yes. where we can give them a really good offering. So we need to push in those two. Then I think the track phone is now sort of, we're in the middle of the integration, we're on track with it, but there's a lot of exciting products that is coming out to that market as well. So that's really to bring that to growth, to bring the track phone brands to growth, uh, because in the beginning of, of track phone, we are, we're, we are losing some customers because some of the customers was on other operators' networks, so by definition, they, they lost a little bit there. So, but then uh, get, getting back to that. And then continue to be efficient, work collaborative. And the biggest assets we have is, of course, the V-teamers. You guys come together, uh, huddle, go for it, and see that you put up 
ambitious goals because that's the only way to reach them and work together to make it happen. Uh, uh, that's the ask we have. All of us, including myself, need to do that. Spent a week last week uh, with Krista Manon, our consumer yeah. leaders traveling the country, and the energy, the confidence, the swagger, the belief in each other, it's palpable. And certainly, when you tell that story to analysts, I know you feel that pride yeah. as well for our V team. Yeah, and... Uh, and um, uh, Always when I go to, like I was in San Francisco yesterday, I always try to visit uh, our own employees. So I went to the Blue Jeans team, which uh, are the developer team in San Francisco, talk to them a little bit what's happening in Blue Jeans. Then, then of course, I went to two stores and listen to what's happening in the stores, how our offerings are working. And I have to say, the excitement in the stores are really coming in. They are really excited about fixed wireless access, or welcome plan, or Apple One, uh, and the iPhone 14, uh, the Samsung uh, flip phones or foldable phones. All that is coming to the stores right now. So the excitement in the stores, that's really there. And this is our guys that are selling for us every day and seeing that we are actually being successful. So, no, it's exciting. It's yeah. exciting. And what I've noticed is, yes, I took a lot of notes during this call, but certainly there's plenty of pages left, <laughs> blank pages here. And I invite all of us to continue writing that story of Verizon, reshaping it, and really be proud yeah. of what we're doing. Hans, Absolutely. thank you very much Andy, for joining us. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, hey, invite always stands. So you're, you're always welcome back on us. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I'm happy that I was invited <laughs> back to UTS. So I will continue to be here for sure. Excellent. Well, Thank you very much, Hans, and of course, thank you uh, to everyone watching. Once again, um, we'll provide the uh, the link uh, to the uh, the Goldman uh, presentation, and certainly you can listen again to Hans's remarks. But certainly, thank you very much uh, for listening in with us. Have a great day, and until next time, you're up to speed.